Hello and welcome to another Writerly Witterings. Another Writerly Witterings five minute review, in fact. My name is Michael Jex, I'm an author and I'm presenting a series of five minute reviews about books that I've recently read that I really enjoyed. And today, what have we got? We have this The Bookseller's Tale by Anne Swinfen. Now, this is a really good medieval story. It's a really good crime story. It's a very well written book. And it's obviously written by someone who really knows her period. Anne Swinfin, I believe, was an academic for almost all of her life and came to writing, I don't know when, but she's the author of a number of books. I first heard of Anne because we started chatting on Facebook and I'm very very sad that I never managed to meet her. Unfortunately she died last year and I don't know if it was a sudden death or from a long illness but I do know that I deeply regret not having met her because she from talking to her was a lovely lady. But that's not about this book. This book is set in Oxford in 1353. It is set around a man who's a bookseller, uh, Nicholas Elliot. And she brings to life the bookselling trade of the 1300s really superbly. She's got an excellent... Um, She's almost got the precision of a short story writer. The way that she depicts people... Hello, go away, thank you. The way that she depicts people is very quick, very straightforward, but you feel as though you understand the people even after a very short description. Nicholas Elliot himself is a widower. He's got a couple of kids. His wife, unfortunately, was one of those many who died in the plague, in the Black Death. And so he's now living with his sister, who is acting as mother to his two children. He was a student at Oxford University and had a good friend there, Jordane. Jordane is now uh, master of his own college, whereas Elliot fell in love with his wife and that's why he didn't continue his studies, because... You had to be celibate in those days. The interesting thing about this is that there is a body discovered by Elliot in the river as he's walking past one day. He drags it out of the river and the lovely thing is that this book starts to depict from only the second or third chapter the difficulties that there always were between the town and the gown. There were two different sets of laws, there were two different sets of investigators. Coroners wouldn't want to get involved from the town in a student's death and vice versa. And this book, very simply but really beautifully, um, explains all about the difficulties that there were between the different types of legal system. She explains all about the style of life outside the university, the style of life inside the university. Superbly well done. Now, the plot itself is a very modern style of plot because it's not the death that's really the fascinating thing here, it's the cause for the death. And the boy who died was a student, one of Jordan's students, was a notably good scholar and writer and so good, in fact, that Elliot had used him to copy out some books in the years before. But it gets more convoluted, and it's quite a modern plot, because you're looking at the value of something that exists compared to a copy. Um, if, it's some, if it's a genuine Mona Lisa, it's worth a fortune. If it's a copy, it's clearly not. And it's similar to that. I'm, I'm fr trying desperately not to give away the plot. But the nice thing about this is that it explains a lot about the bookselling market and it investigates 
what value really is. I think that's a fair summary. Anyway, I would say this is a superb book, really well worth reading. I thoroughly enjoyed it and I'm going to have to buy some of the, some of Anne's other books now and I really strongly recommend if you like my books or if you like Susanna Gregory's books I think you'll probably like these as well. There you go, a five minute review. Thanks very much for watching. I'll speak to you soon. Cheers.